Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to the series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through three adventures that were all developed for the Knave Game Jam, which has recently just finished up. I, I gotta say, guys, the Knave Game Jam, it was kind of ridiculous how many excellent adventures were submitted to that. I downloaded all of them, it's over a hundred of them, and I read through them, and yeah, there were some that weren't that great, but Compared to other game jams that I've watched and looked through and read the adventures from, and, and, and this one was just insanely good. It was full of artists, cartographers, adventure designers who were top tier. You know, almost all in, in terms of, of their production were amateurs. And what I mean by that is like, they don't have, you know, they're not making money off of these adventures. They're not, I mean, it might be like pay what you want, but they're not like a whole bunch of producers. There are some that had like, you know, other adventures, other games and things. And the more you you, know, you click on their, their links and it takes them to their websites and they have like 10 adventures that are all like three bucks or whatever. Most people were just like, hey, I'm gonna put something together for it. And it was kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. So I wanna go through three of them today. Onkeg, in the mines, no one can hear you scream, which is very obviously Onkeg is a play on Alien. And that's what this one is about. I'll talk about more, more in a minute. The Cave of Coagulation which is fantastic. It's a cheese-themed adventure. Cheese is, uh, what does Chesterton say? The poets have been strangely silent on the subject of cheese. And then there's Into the Lithoplex, which is an underground adventure for Knave. These are all for Knave second edition, of course, because it's for the Knave game jam. Now, these are all, uh, I don't think any AI, AI art was used for them. I don't think there was any, um, I think it was just one person for each of these adventures, putting together the maps, the art, and the design, I think. But we'll go back through and see. So Onkeg, in the mines, no one can hear you scream. Uh, brain flare-like creature acid blood tactic burrow. So the idea here is that there was this mine and there are these Onkegs that have been mixed with mine flares, essentially. Uh, a mine flare has taken over an Onkeg queen and is controlling all of them in this sort of colony. And you have this mine with, uh, you have the N Nemor Fox, Nemor Fox instead of the Necromorph, right? Um, you have Jonesy the Badger, was a pet of the dwarves. It still has a collar and a name tag. Who's a Jonesy? If you guys know Jonesy. Lizard is the little dwarf girl. Real name is Zolabeth. Um, Lizard instead of Newt, right? From Aliens. Aliens. And then you have Wayland, which is a clay golem who kind of starts to sympathize with these things and think they're beautiful, right? So you have Ash from, uh, from the Wayland, you know, Wayland Yutani Corporation from Alien. So it's great. You have like these really, you know, pretty obvious references, but hey, I think that's fine. If you were to play this with a group of players who didn't know Alien, well, they wouldn't notice the difference. And if you were to play it with a group of alien people who did know Alien and Aliens, they would be like, hey, that's funny. And it might be lift the tone a little bit, which is an otherwise pretty gruesome, gross adventure because you have these mind flayers that are doing like skull bursters. They, they, they attach to you, a thing gets into your head and it bursts out of your skull, killing you and creating a new creature. And then some of them become warriors, and then the, the queen is in the background. So it's really, really interesting. Um, I think it's great. And it's just a very simple adventure. You have the um, wandering encounter chart. Um, you have the delve shifts, things that can happen on a delve shift. Magic and useful items you can find. And then you have each of the locations marked and what's there and what's going on there. And it's pretty simple. Things like chains and broken lifts, crank systems. Mule corpses, caustic puddles, badger, Jonesy the ba badger. Um, uh, you have the desert guard post, on keg attack. Um, trying to drag at least one person into the wall and to burrow away and to devour. The skittering barracks, the tattered mess hall, the hidden well. Here you have the map and it's very, like almost sci-fi, right? It's got that green scan look to it. And at first it looks really, really linear, but what you see is actually that there, once you get to about room five, you have, many, you have multiple ways of going forward. It's you, know, you take left or right, granted, but still it's like, do you go this way or that way? And then once you get into nine, you can choose to go down the shaft or you can go down the stairs. And once you're in 10, you can go through into 12 or 14. Once you're in 13, you can go to 16 and 12. And then it looks like there is a you know, different ways of getting down to 17, or at least there's one way to get down to 17 and then 18. So it does have some choice. It's not completely linear. It's not wide open. There's one way in and one way out. And I think you're, once you're in, you're kind of stuck. That's kind of part of the idea here. You don't easily get to leave. But it's pretty straightforward of a map. Still, there's enough choice that it would be like, okay, it's not just room to room 
okay, we, we you know curated experience this room, then that room, then this room. I wish the map were a little bit more frequently, but that's fine. It's not that big of a dungeon, so it's not too hard to find out. Um, and then you go all the way down to the brains of the operation. Um, you have the monsters, which are these new sort of creatures. Um, yeah, I think I think it's 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 pretty good. <laughs> the mind keg queens. Instead of om cakes, they're mind kegs. And that's it. I admire her. Pu it's purity. A survivor, unclouded by conscience, remorse, or delusions of morality. Ash, the science officer. I think that's. Um, I think that is Ian Holm in the Alien. Yeah. So Ankeg, in the mines, no one can hear you scream. It's a fantastic adventure. These are all pay what you want, by the way, or free. Um, it's a fantastic little adventure. If you're looking for a creepy horror-themed, alien-themed adventure for Halloween, if you're into the body horror, you know, flat chest bursters, Alien is very disturbing to me. Aliens is kind of just like a fun action movie. <laughs> I think like a horror action, but mostly action. But Alien is very disturbing to me, even today. And uh, so I really thought this one was well done. It really gets that, uh, it evokes that mood. It evokes it very, very well, so... On cake, I highly recommend you guys check that out. The next is the Cave of Coagulation. As I said, this is a cheese-themed adventure. It's great. Um, it's really, really great. So this is, um, yeah, no AI-generated content was used in the creation of this book. I like that. This is a story of greed and cheese. Blind with greed, Isaac Lewis unfurled the scroll of coagulation in the dank depths of his cheese cave and invoked the incantation scrawled on the ancient parchment. Meant to ripen all of his cheese into a delectable, rich, textured, age worth countless coin and industry fame. The ritual quickly spiraled out of control and transformed his cave into a primordial nightmare full of dairy curdling creatures and shambling undead. In a last ditch effort to reverse the spell, Isaac tore the scroll to three pieces, but it was already too late. Now the fragments are strewn about the cursed cave, and Isaac is doomed to lurk his halls of decaying and tainted cheese as an abomination of nature. So you've been sent in to find out why the cave deliveries are not being those by the cheese deliveries are not being done. And inside you have the cheesemonger. And yes, it's great. You have to find the fragments of the scroll and reverse the curse. So that's the idea here. But it is a fantastic little adventure in terms of that theming. So you have a very simple dungeon. Again, it's got that sort of variation on choice. Okay, you can go here, 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 here. It's not super open. But that's fine. That's fine. There are plenty of ways to proceed through different paths, passages to choose. You know, dead end in six, so you have an alternate or optional path there. All those things. Plenty of plenty of places to explore for a short dungeon. Your players are going to have a good time and not feel railroaded here. A D20 encounter table, and they're hilarious. Uh, acidic drips from the ceiling. A bloated cheese wheel erupts, spewing noxious spores. A hunk of bioluminescent cheese that can be used as a torch. Um, ancient, un ancient wandering undead miners appear lost. A man ape surrounded by D4 more, watching enthusiastically clipping, clapping and hollering as them tied a mutant cheese mite, or attempting to ride a mutant cheese mite. Six feta fiends. D600 mutant cheese mites. D8 undead cheese makers. It's so good. Dairy devils. Whey potion table. Anyway, now you got the adventure, and what you have is each of the different rooms is marked, is drawn on each room location, so you know exactly where you are as it moves from room to room. So number one, number two, and there, you see them right there. It, the layout is great. You have the um, the yellowish backgrounded um, highlighted things with uh, bolding. You have uh, italics. You have green backgrounds. You have, it's a very, very simple, um, but effective formatting. I like it a lot. It's appealing to me. It doesn't look usual. The green and the yellow kind of has that. I don't know. It just doesn't look like most people, uh, most adventures. The adventure is pretty straightforward in that regard, right? You're going through, you're fighting these undead cheese makers. You're fighting um, creatures that have related to cheese. Uh, it's just funny. The stuff you're finding is all about cheese. There's a statue of a god of cheese. Um, there's some tricks. There's some traps. There's some uh, role playing to deal with the torture of renewal. That's pretty cool. The glass of past hours, it's also pretty cool. The Terminus Riz. Uh, it, there's just a lot of really good, um, funny magic items. And and just, I don't know, it's a very interesting adventure. It's very good. I, I like it a lot. You've got you know, Gouda Golems. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, 
I'm a sucker for pun dungeons, and this is basically just full of, of cheese jokes and puns, and, and, and yeah, I think it's a one-shot. This is hilarious. There's a character named Brie Larceny. Ah, come on. <laughs> How can you not like it? Uh, it's really funny. Um, yeah, she's not a good... She's not very nice. <laughs> uh, Pedophines, you have the stomach smell sweet and acrid. They have the Witch of the Way. Uh, she's arrived from the future, but that's all in the past. Um, yeah, she can tell you how to undo it if you treat her right. So there's some role-playing, there's some fighting, there's some, um, again, tricks and traps and stuff to encounter and how to deal with these various problems, right? The barrels block the entrance to the milk cellar currently occupied by the three drunk dairy devils. Players decide to destroy the barrel set and the devils will become aggressive. It can only be calmed down by a successful DC 17 charisma check. If combat is avoided, they won't insist the players leave. So there's, um, uh, you know, 600-pound barrels of milk, sour milk, blocking the way. How are they going to get past there are lots of things like that where you're like, okay, well, what are we just going to do? Are we going to fight our way through? Are we going to brute force it? In which case, you can do that, and then there's, you know, results. But uh, if you if you go around or if you find another way to get through it, then there's another, suddenly, another, uh, another set of choices. So it's not just a combat dungeon. It's not just going through fighting, fighting, fighting. So it's pretty cool. The three uh, uh, dairy devils are named Calm, Colin, and Clove. Yeah. Tyromancy boon. Life, death, love, fear, strength, and knowledge. And you can find the three pieces of uh, scroll of coagulation. There's the Limburger Lich down here. Hey, that's Isaac Lewis. He's now the Limburger Lich. And the scroll in the Limburger Lich, depending on how the players are faring when they enter the South F vintage, the GM is free to place the Limburger Lich towards the back and roll a couple more times in the D20 encounter table as the players make their way towards him. The players have a variety of options of how they proceed, some of which are steal as much ripe cheese as possible, return to town to sell it, keep them distracted and use the scroll, uh, slay him, uh, leaving them free to haul away the cheese and perform the ritual to lift the curse at the cost of Isaac's life. So you can choose how you want to proceed there. The ritual is pretty simple. And then you can get some whey potions, some enchanted cheeses, and what waits behind the wall in the south of the adventure. Wheel from cheese, rind and age, so ripe, time against we turn. I love the Cave of Coagulation. I think it's hilarious. If you're interested in a cheese-themed adventure, I highly recommend it. Not that usually people are in the mood for a cheese-themed adventure or it's not top of their minds, but if it happens to be, this is the way to go. <laughs> and I think given that this exists now, it should be on top of your mind. Okay, the last one is Into the Lithoplex, an underground adventure for Nave 2E. This one is really, really cool. So the idea here is that there's this vast wasteland and a huge entrance, a chasm, which opens up into a, an underground, you know, a cavern, a huge underground cavern with a citadel and a city down there. And um, at the bottom of it is a temple, which is buried with a double R, um, and a fungal farm, the chasm, the ruined city. And it's just this, this idea that uh, it's not really a, there's not really a set reason to go down here in this adventure, as you'll see. It's kind of up to you to explore. So there's a surface, and I love the art. I love the art in this book. It's so, so good. So there's a there's a there's an entrance up here, and as you can see, this, this shaft, there's a small little town um, nearby, and there's some organizations, there's maybe some places, there's some NPCs, um, locations in this little town. And then you go down into the citadel. It started out as a simple outpost in the ruins, the base for elevators, and a place where to temporarily stock items and cargo later transport to the surface. With time and a constant flux of adventurers and merchants, many people arrived and started to occupy more and more of the surrounding structures. Nowadays, it houses hundreds of people, and all the businesses and shops, location, anyone within the ruins might need to work and live. And so you have this, this little uh, city growing up in the middle of the town. And there are locations, there are um, NPCs, there are events that are happening there. Um, and then uh, there are factions, the Black Hand, the Veil of Mercy, the Iron Keepers, the Retrievers, and the Farmer's Guild. The Binding Ritual, which is one of the things that, so basically this place is shifting around, it can shift around. Um, it keeps the Lithoplex, Lithoplex in place and anchored to this reality because it's constantly growing, it's constantly changing, and it's constantly warping through, through realities. So you have to bind it to this location. Um, and one of the interesting things is the, the, the book says, hey, you could, you could players could be there to stop the binding ritual or to make sure it happens. Uh, you can go either way you want there. 
Warden Enoch. Um, there's the Silent Tunnels, Stitch Master Gregor, an elderly, uh, good-natured goblin surgeon. Has been trained by Enoch to perform the terrible surgeries he needs to stay alive. Um, there's Dark Experiments down here. The Five Fingers of the Black Hand, Pharanos the Noble, Mirror of the Witch, Ox Mauler, Lagart the Unseen. You know, the Graven Curse, which is uh, this aff affliction that's turning people into stone if they spend too much time here or around here. And how to counter it. Uh, petrobites, lithoform creatures. And there's the uh, stats and how to change any creature into, lith into a lithoform version of it. And then you have exploring the shifting buildings. Because again, this is not quite here, it's, it's in flux. Things are changing over time, nothing is, nothing is permanent, it's all temporary. This is a city that expands out from the Citadel that isn't permanently here. And so there are encounters you can roll, um, you know, lithoplex encounters, lithoplex travel shifts. There's the furnace, which is a location there. Um, it's a towering structure. There's the iron library within it. Firemaster Bolm. And then you have a race for the blood of the ruins. The new tunnels are finally cleared. Retrievers are putting their best delvers forward. The black hand has already departed before anyone. The search for the blood of the ruins has started. And this is a sort of, you know, final adventure for you to run. You have the chasm and how, how deep it goes. Locations of interest. Travel to the chasm and back. Battle at the Buried Temple. So if you finally get there, um, you have the Descending Stairs, the Abyss, and just the location of a dungeon. It's a quick dungeon. It's pretty pretty short, all, all things considered. Um, there's a Lithoform Giant Spider, which is pretty cool. Uh, only do this if you need the extra challenge. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. There's an epilogue and possible endings if you complete or stop the ritual. All right, this is a really, really cool adventure because it's basically like not just an adventure. I mean, it's a, it's an adventure, but it's not just one dungeon. It's like, hey, here is a, a location, a region a, to put into your game, a campaign hub that you could run from, and here's a few ideas about how to proceed with it. But it's tons and tons of stuff, and I love how the art fits that. For a, for a short game jam adventure, this is incredible, I think, that all this stuff is coherent. The NPC art, the maps, the, the cover art, all of it fits together in a really, really great way. So I highly recommend you guys check out all of these. Again, they're all free or pay what you want, so this is amazing. Into the Lithoplex, uh, Cave of Coagulation, and Ankeg. All for the Knave 2nd Edition Game Jam. I'll put links below to where you can get them. All right, guys, that'll do it for this one. Hope it's been interesting, and I'll see you all in another video.